right. Welcome. This is uh, DJ Arrow Avi, a.k.a. DJ Avi, a.k.a. Your Tech Set Guru. I'm here today interviewing my friend, Sean Miller, a.k.a. Rico Star. So, yes, yes. So Rico Star is, I don't want to say an up-and-coming rapper, an up-and-coming artist, because the man's been grinding for a number of years, and I feel like his, his time is coming. So it's one of those things that I wanted to do today is I, I, asked, I asked him, I said, look, I want to interview you because I feel like your story needs to get out there more. And if I can help push it, I definitely want to. So a little background on me first is just, you know, and how I know Sean Miller, how do I, how I know Rico star. I met Rico star back in the day. Um, I was actually trying to date his girlfriend's best friend. And so I ended up meeting Rico star through, hey. through that mutual relationship. And then when they broke up, me and Rico star, were like, we're still cool. <laughs> so, yeah, cool, so we, man. we still stuck it. We still stuck together. And, Get in there, man. Yeah, and that's just the short end of things. And so I started following you when you started doing music and you started to put yourself out there. And I had no idea back in the day, that this, these were part of your aspirations. You know, a lot of us grow and a lot of us change uh, through time. And then basically we come up with who we are and where we want to grow as a person, as an artist, as a creative. So um, I want to, you know, I want to first start this off, uh, Sean, by welcoming you, welcoming you Rico Star, And then I want to ask you first and foremost, you know, who is Sean Miller and who is Rico Star? All right. All right, man. Sean is uh Sean was the name that my parents gave me. I was actually named after my uncle, uh my, my deceased uncle. Uh they gave me his name. Is you know, I I I guess that's just something families do. They'll dedicate a name of a child or to a fallen loved one or something. That's where the name came from. Um it more or less just became me. Rico came as um me and some friends were joking around. I couldn't really come up with the name. Originally, my rap, my stage name uh, was originally Lil Red. I, uh, that's the name I went with, Lil Red. Because, you know, at one point, everybody was Lil This, Big This, Big That. Um, I remember I was uh, with this group, and we were rapping. And they was like, what's your name? I was like, Lil Red. He was like, nah, you some New York guys. Like, nah, B, you got to change that. You sound like a girl. I was like, <laughs> Lil Red? He's like, that's like a girl name. Like, we... From where we from, we call the red bones them the shorty. So no, you can't be little red. Like, <laughs> what they gonna call you? And then my uh, other one was like, you go by Rico, and you said Rico, and I was like, yeah, cause the way it came up, um, I have long hair. I permed my hair once upon a time. Yeah. And had the ponytail, and one of my homeboys Z was like, yo Rico Suave. Oh no no, that's Rico Rouge right there. <laughs> and I'm like, uh. Everybody who saw me was like, Rico, Rico Suave, Rico Suave. And I was like, all right, man, I don't want to be called Rico Suave because I'm the light-skinned guy. <laughs> what can I throw on it to make it mine? So yeah. then I thought about it, and I was like, eh, Rico Star, man, that, that works. So uh, I just took the name, and I've ran with it. Since then, I've, I've contemplated changing my name at least twice. Right. Oh, wow. That's, that's crazy. So where did the concepts and ideas come from, like, and how have you grown as a person as a, and as an artist? Like the concept of putting yourself together as a Rico star, like where did those ideas and concepts come from? The concept came from, okay, so originally the idea was to have this, this image. You know, back in, back in the day, like the early 2000s, every rapper had like a niche. It was almost like rappers had gimmicks, like even 50 Cent. I don't want to call his a gimmick, but I got shot nine times. I got shot nine times. His thing was, I got shot nine times. And we like, yo, he the tough guy. Got yeah. swole, got, got shot. Um, yeah. Eminem, crazy, lyrical guy. Andre was, you know, the sophisticated Southerner. So it's like, I want to find my own identity. Because originally, the only reason I really started rapping or making music was, um, truthfully, it was the one thing I got praised for. Um, I dealt with a lot of self-esteem and confidence issues growing up. So, you know, high school rolled around and people freestyling. And the way it started for me was with, with Nick Cannon does Wild Style. Uh, shout out to Nick Cannon. Um, one of my best friends, his big brother used to just 
Jones on me. He used to go in hard. So one day I upped the ante by rhyming what I was saying about him and, you know, start picking on everybody. I was like, ooh, you know, and I went to school and one day they was like, man, who can battle rap? And they were like, him, him, Sean, he could do it, he could do it. So everybody pointed to me <laughs> and I'm all bashful and shy. And, and then I just ate the guy up in the verse and everybody was like, him? <laughs> <laughs> that guy hey. and and after then it was like the the attention and respect that i felt when i just started freestyling and just putting words together i never felt anything like it like i i wasn't uh a star basketball player athlete yeah i dabbled in sports but this was the one thing that i felt like like uh kanye said in that song um you know he said i, I picked the field where they couldn't sat me you know, so this is pretty much the feel I felt like, you know, you can't sat me. Like, this is the feel that I can run. So Yeah. Man, that's what's up. So, you know, a lot of people, they, they kind of base their their grind upon how many albums they, they do, how many mixtapes, how many songs they come out with. I know this is kind of a, kind of a, a blank statement, but do you know how many you've recorded do you even actually keep track of how many you write versus you record and how many you just sit on the shelf like what what's out there like i mean i i know you're thinking of stuff all the time but where, you well, know i did do an album under the moniker little red that was the first project i ever did shout out to bump man okay okay that with him on bump man. His eight track recorder like he had an eight track recorder he saved up his money he bought one and, you know, I used to get him ride home from school. And me and him were just tight. We was in band. So we record just track, track, track. And I recorded my album off of there. I was making my beats on MTV Music Generator. Yeah. So I was how I was making all my beats. Shout out to all the generator producers. Uh, that was the first project. Um, I released the second project uh, under Rico Star. And it was, uh, what was it? It was, uh, I think it was uh, Memoirs of a Star. Mm. And then I put out another one called The Contender. Uh, no, Memoirs of a Star was the album. Uh, the Contender was, uh, I wanted the crown, man. I felt like I want the crown. So I was like challenging every rap person in the area. Like, who yeah. my competition? Who, I'm the, I'm the number one contender. Like, I, yeah. I couldn't consider myself the best rapper or the king of the rap shit locally. So I was like, I'm the number one contender. So I wanted to smoke with everyone. Did the Contender one, did the Contender two. Uh, from there, uh, I got with the Pine Boys released a uh, work in progress. I released uh, to a plethora of just jacking for beat style mixtapes. And then in 2010, I released um, Smooth Operations Volume 1. And uh, two years after that, I released uh, a mixtape called Otaku, which was like an anime dedication. Mm. Um, I took, I actually quit. I pretty much, I, I reached a point where I just, I quit. I wasn't getting the accolades, I didn't blow up. My parents were all in my ear. You need to go to college and get a backup plan because the music thing ain't working. So yeah. I just said, you know what? I'm going to go to college. I went to college to learn how to be a professional producer, engineer, just work behind the scenes. Um, from doing that, I, I just got the craving. So I didn't make them from 20, 2012 to 2016. I put out no music. Four <laughs> years of me just soaking up game, learning, mastering my craft as a producer. 2016 i put out um star superlative and yeah. after star superlative i put out peach parquet um those got me a, got my name back out there and i started getting the attention again i started bubbling up and i started regret taking that time off and from there i acquired new skills uh shot at the full cell university i learned new skills network i met producers engineers i met uh designers a bunch of people who were able to assist me with taking my craft more seriously. So from there, I started uh, Star Superior uh, LLC, Star Superior uh, Music, that's the label. And I just decided to take every legal approach to make sure everything was legit. Um, so since then, I put out a couple of more projects uh, at the top. Let me see, we put out E2E2 last year. I mean, in 2018, we put out E2E2. Mm -hmm. And then I also put out uh, the Rilla Run, the Re-Up Run, and then I took a break again because I had to pursue work. So I, I went and lived abroad for a whole year. Wow. I lived out of the country. And I during that time, I was a production assistant. I was a production assistant uh, for a cruise line. My job was to help set up, uh, produce, and do shows for singers and uh, 
a lot of these bands and just hearing these this amazing talent day in and day out it inspired me so much when i came home i was like i have to hit the ground running unfortunately my father passed during that time so i was able to create um i did uh paying for champagne yeah uh, did paying for champagne after paying for champagne uh i let that bubble did some shows and from there i was came back this year went to release some more projects I'm losing track of count right now, but <laughs> this year alone, we released E2E3, the E2E Experience, uh, which is a group I'm in with uh, my cousin, Ju Shot Juicy and Slimothy. Uh, mm. I did Valifornia. I did uh, Stars and Strife. And I just released uh, Botanical Bounce Volume 1. Right. Right. So that's a you're, 10, man. Yeah, least. man. That's that's quite a bit, man. Quite a discog discography on you. So, you know, they... Um, so you're on you're on most of these platforms. I listen to you on Spotify, but you're on Tidal, YouTube, Apple Music. Are you on anything else that we don't know about? It was a battle. I, I tell you one thing. Uh, I was hearing Steve Stout, who apparently has uh, his finger in United Masters. That's one of the companies he works with. Uh, that's not a distributor I use, but hearing the interview on the Breakfast Club, he was talking about uh, labels versus people doing things independent. Um, one of the big artists that I started following in the past two, three years was this artist called Russ. Started following Russ because he's independent. All that shit Macklemore was saying about independent, I feel like Russ really did that, like mm -hmm. more independently. Um, Macklemore, you know, he got a bit of a, correct me if I'm wrong, but he got a bit of a notoriety. He was able to hit radio. And yeah. Kind of partnership. Um, so he had the big machine behind him, but he paid them up front for their services. So it wasn't like, oh, here's an advance. You work for me. It was like, uh, I want you to do this. I'm going to pay you for it. I think right. Chance the Rapper does the same approach. So hearing these guys do interviews, I started soaking up games. So what can I do? Uh, the biggest right. battle was getting on Pandora. Pandora was just the hardest one to get on because wow. I had to vehemently fight them. I had to call. I had to send emails for like a whole year just to get them on there. I personally use Title because... Title does the biggest payout, and Jay Z, J Cole, uh, Madonna, Dead Mouse, and a slew of other artists are all owners in Title. So I feel like it's artists own. Let me support them. But even them trying to get my bio updated was a fight. Like, wow. let me get my bio updated, get this updated. It took me almost a year just to get my picture. My whole profile was blank on Title. Shout out to Title, they eventually did fix it. Yeah. But, um, not having that blue check on Instagram and Twitter, man. People don't take you seriously without that. That's true. So you have to, even if you got all the legal paperwork, um, you essentially need streams. You need to go viral. So I fought to get on every platform that I've, I've been able to get on to get my music shared. You never tried to get on like uh, like iHeartRadio or anything like that. They don't really. I'm on iHeartRadio. You are? Okay. okay. It came it came with the package with my distributor. Shout out to DistroKid. That's what I, I currently use. Um, I use them and they got my stuff on iHeart. I was actually able to get into some independent uh, college or independent internet radio stations because they were able to find my music through iHeart. Uh, iHeart had a record pool, so me submitting my music there, they were able to get access to it. Wow. That's pretty cool. So, who inspired you musically? Like, past, present, and even upcoming artists, like people we don't even know about. Like, who's inspiring you today and, and before? Well... Like any kid born in the 80s, I wanted to be Michael Jackson. When I was yeah, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah. I wanted to sing, man. I had the glove. My parents used to call me, Chun, come down here, do the dance for your auntie. They used to do me like that and I do the dance. Yeah. I seen uh, Tevin Campbell came out and then he did the power line for the Goofy movie. So I wanted to be Tevin Campbell at one point and puberty hit and said, nope, you're not going to sing. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, gone. So I lost my voice. Ah. Uh. And then I picked up the rapping. Uh, one of my biggest films with rapping, I, I, I can honestly have to point the under three thousand Outcast. I'm gonna say Outcast, the whole Dungeon family. Yeah, man. Um, on the na national scale, uh, uh, Eminem was what I was listening to when I decided when people pulled me into battle rapping. It was I was yeah. on Eminem hard, like I'm talking about mixtape Eminem raw. Me too, me too. Like, so that's what pushed me in that direction. Um, locally, a couple of artists, Puff and LB. Yeah. Um, they're from my neighborhood, and they were the first people that I ever, like a guy down the street from me is putting out albums on CDs, and I'm like, wait a minute, my best friend's big brother's best friend with these guys, so we used to see them make the music, and it was like, 
you can do it too. One of my best friends to this day, shout out Iowa's. He, our parents work at the same place. So we, we have the same semi affluent background with as far as our parents being able to buy us equipment and gear and computers. So he had access to stuff, but he had the dream. So when his group at the time, MOB was like the hottest thing in school, I'm going to him like, uh, how much you'll charge me to record a song at your studio? And he was mm. like, yeah, I, I, I $20. Give me $25 and you can come and record. So I paid him, recorded a song. Um, and that's how it started from there. It was like, I got to get my own, I got to get my own equipment. So, uh, a mix of just national talent, local talent, just like kid dreams, man. Everything just kind of pulled in to make me want to do this music thing. That's cool. Do you see anybody like right now that's coming up? That's that nobody even knows about. Like, do you see anybody right now that, that inspires you, even the young talent? Man. Um, a lot of, I tell you what, I, I reached, uh, I reached my thirties and I realized many of my peers and friends got that phase where they're like, they only listen to the rap that we listened to in high school and college. Yeah. They reached that point where they just stopped checking out new artists. I right. never wanted to be that guy. Cause I wanted to be involved. I wanted to be hip. I wanted to talk to my 15 year old cousins about the new rappers. So I always made it a point to stay in the loop. And so far I've been pretty successful. Um, a lot of the new guys shout out to them. I really admire, the hustle, I, I admire them mastering the flow, even with a lot of them sharing the same flow and making it theirs for the time that they're on the tracks. I admire the camaraderie they have because back in the day, that was a no-no. You listen to Wu-Tang, you get nine dudes, nine different flows. On uh, his uh, under 3,000 on the Quimini, he never used the same flow twice. Mm. Go back and listen to that album, yeah. under 3,000, never used the same flow twice. That's crazy. Impressive. You don't hear that a lot. Uh, over time, things just grew. I would say in today's time, uh, one of my biggest, uh, one of the art, newer artists, I say, I can't even say new. The guy's been in the, he's an icon at this point, been in the game 10 years. Future is one of the guys I look at that's like, okay, I really admire what he does because he has kids. He has other artists that sound like him that he put on. Migos has kids at this, at this point. I admire them. Young Thug has kids. Gucci man has great, great grandkids in the rap game. Yeah. Artists that he put on that put on other artists that brought up other artists. So it's like the game's always growing. I just study what they do because they can do it so well. And it made me say, okay, what can I do? Because originally the auto tune thing, when it took over the game, I remember when Jay Z tried to kill it with Death Auto Tune. Yeah. It didn't go nowhere. It just came back stronger and it ended up becoming a phenomenal force in, in music. So I just tried to incorporate the new styles because I didn't want to be in 2020 rapping like it's 2003. It's, yeah, that's it's true. Done. He but inadvertently, listen. he kind of supported, he supported the uh, auto-tune uh, rap, mumble soon, rap, mumble rap after balance. that. You got artists, uh, Griselda, Griselda Records, shout out, man, uh, West Side Gun, Bunny the Butcher, Conway the Machine. Like, that's inspiration for me because these are a bunch of guys my age who was yeah. like, dude, we've been trying to get on for 12 years. Nobody was listening. We tried the new age shit. It wasn't working. So we went back to that gritty mob deep New York era, just just grimy sound. And when everything started to sound the same, they jumped to the front because they sounded like, whoa, these guys are rapping like 50 Cent was rapping on Get Rich Die Trying. These guys are rapping like the old school New York by and it's hard, hard beats. And when the production started mashing. Um, they started getting up with uh, some of the same producers currency uses and you know melodic beats and uh just a lot of bravado is it's you know it's it just you harness that you see that the age doesn't have to play a part in how long you're grinding because when people catch on to you as long as your sign is consistent and it's authentically you you can be an old artist that one day you become a new artist absolutely absolutely so you know we you know this the the point of this this interview i, I kind of wanted to move to your current album uh but before we do that actually let's uh man just just to see if you had to if you had to pick like as far as dream collaborations right now like who could you work with living or dead or who would you want to work with right now like whoo dream collaborations um i'm gonna i'm gonna leave this up to like living artists uh, okay 
as far as living artists, uh, guys does a lot of stuff in the media. I don't know what's up with this presidential crap this man talking about, <laughs> but even with all that going on, I'd still dream of getting in the booth with Kanye, man. Yeah, yeah. Pharrell is like Musical a god genius. to me. Yeah, like Pharrell. Like if like if I. I want to work with him more than I want to work with any other artist is Pharrell with Neptune. Yeah. That sound being able to distinctly, distinctively just round off everyone's album. I knew that I, I knew that I was a lifelong Neptune's fan when I heard uh, Allure on the Black album. Mm. And I was like, oh, it's over with, bro. Like, these, I don't hear these major seven, minor seven chords and things like this all around songs. Like, it was just different. And um, what they do with NERD, uh, with the pop and the hip hop, like I, I would like to do that. Also, out of left field, Brandon Yuri, man, from Panic at the Disco, man, I okay. really want to work with him. Like I, I want to work with uh, work with them. Uh, with Pete Wentz, I'm a big fan of Fall Out Boy. Um, so it's I don't want to limit myself to just hip hop. I want to work with some of these alternatives, some of these other uh, pop producers. Uh, but outside, you know, it's a lot of hip hop uh, guys. I'd love to get in the, anybody Gucci just had on his album recently. I'd love to get in the booth with anybody out of Gucci camp, anybody out of Free Band, anybody out of QC. Like, I really dig the sound. So it's like, I'm I'm up to it. I just want to work with these guys, man, because cool. it's a modern sound. But then there's some legends in the game that I really do uh, want to be able to get a get a track in with, man. You know, any R and B, R and B. Okay, uh, I would like to do a song with Pink Sweats. I really think Pink Sweats. Uh, shout out, man. See, we both like Pink, man. Yeah. Um, okay. uh, I, I'm digging Pink Sweats. Uh, Miguel, I always admire the songs he did with J. Cole. I, yeah. I always thought those were dope collaborations. Um, put me in the booth with Rihanna. I don't even know if I can get the song done. <laughs> I'd just be too, <laughs> I'd be scared to just look at her in the face, like, nah. But, but yeah, <laughs> man. Um, R and B wise, man, it's a lot of it's a lot of new talent. I try to follow a lot of artists. Ty Dollar Sign, man. Ty, what's up? Ty Dollar Sign, man. Yeah. I want to get in the booth with Ty Dollar Sign. Like, here's my favorite R and B artist. Here's my favorite current my, my current favorite R and B artist is Ty Dollar Sign. That's cool. Um, he's, you know, so yeah. Okay. Well, let's see. Uh, so moving on to your current album right now, Botanical Bounce Volume One. What did that Where did that title come from? And like, why? And you know, before we go over the tracks, where where that title come from? Like, <laughs> you know? Oh, I, it would be easier to show you than tell you. One sec, hold on. Okay, okay. All right. Get up during the interview and go grab something. Okay. okay. Botanical bouts, man, came from. This is a shameless plug, but you know, who knows? <laughs> maybe an endorsement to come from it. Centauri <laughs> Roku Gen. Okay. Uh, they basically advertised this gen having six botanicals, right? Hey. So, <laughs> botanical bounce came from, uh, you know, I've been, you know, I decided, to, I decided to see a therapist for my mental health and really try to get some things in my life together. Um, I had a breakthrough when the world just felt crashing down and some things got revealed that I had more answers than I realized. And I wanted to express that musically because going through some of the things I went through, I was frustrated and I couldn't create. So I did this one song and it broke. Everything just broke through. I was able to do everything that I need to do musically. So um, one night I just get here and say, you know what? I, I'm going to make some music. So I pull out my, my keyboard, pull out, uh, upload Fruity Loops, Logic, Ableton, upload all my gear. And I just dive in and I just made some beats. And then I'm like, okay, I made two beats and <laughs> then I was like, yo, I want to record. So, right. So, I'm sipping. I'm sipping the gin. <laughs> and I just, man, I was sipping the gin. I just had this therapeutic breakthrough. And I don't need, I just started freestyling these songs. I get on the mic and I just start saying the stuff. Let that simmer. And then the next day I come back and listen to stuff I was saying. I was like, bro, you were drunk and slizzled, but you said some cool stuff. So, I listened to what I said, thought about it, rewrote it, made it make sense. And then I went back and, um, you know, sent me some old gin and just went back into cool. it. So botanical bounce, it really came from. Uh, I'm gonna say sipping this botanically enhanced gin. There you go. Cause that just opened me up. It made it let all these emotions come out. Cause typically right. I don't I don't record or I don't like to involve substances too much when I record. I like to.
have a clean mind because I don't want to be a slave to having to become, you know, high or drunk in order to create. Right. Sometimes I lit a joint, took a couple shots, and I was like, you know, I got to express how I feel. Um, and then it just ended up becoming like uh, botanicals, flowers. I always liked the flowers and botanicals and, you know, things that look pretty like uh, Sakura, cherry blossoms, things like that. It's just they catch my eye in I started thinking about just outside the, you know, um, every flower has its own love language. And I remember one time, um, the age you were speaking about earlier, I gave her some flowers mm. and i never forget it. Her roommate at the time was like, did you mean to give her those flowers? I was like, yeah, she liked flowers. She was like, well, in our culture, well, the flower you just gave her means this. And I'm oh. like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Like, yeah, you practically proposed to those oh, flowers. Man. And I'm like, <laughs> I did? And he's like, yeah. So at that, that's when I learned flowers have love languages. I, you know, you think roses are the only flowers to say I love you until you give someone, you know, uh, a, something else like an orchid or a tulip or a lily or something. So uh, on Valley Point, I did a song called Lily of the Valley. Yeah. And um, I just, something about being the lily of the valley. So. I just was like, you know what, botanicals, flowers. Uh, shout out Tasha, man. That's, that's my girl, man. That's my homie. Uh, she supplied the artwork, the uh, flower I use. She, uh, okay. Yeah, I hit her up because uh, okay. originally I wanted to use some sunflowers. Uh, yeah. On some, uh, it's an anime called Samurai Shampoo. And uh, one of the girls, she's looking for her father, who is supposed to be the samurai that smells of sunflowers. Mm. And I want to just put a samurai sword, get the gin, get a pedestal, get the sunflowers out there, and just take a dope picture for the artwork. Yeah. Someone posted a picture of some sunflowers, and I asked her where she took it, and she got tight lip like, oh, I can't tell you. <laughs> I'm like, what? So after that happened, I was just like, stop playing. Where you where you took them sunflowers at? She was like, I, it's private property. I'm, I can't tell you. And I'm like, <laughs> private property. All right, I'm done. So I was like, I need to find some flowers. And all the good flowers don't bloom because we in some, everything that yeah. got too hot. So long story less long, man. Um, I hit Tasha up because she's a photographer. She had some pictures of flowers. Um, I seen this beautiful picture of this blue lily that she took. And I was like, that's the one. It's nice, man. That's it's so how, nice. That's where yeah, the so uh, idea came from. So I, I, I'm looking through the list. Like I was, we, we had a conversation before about, about your, uh, about your track list. So, uh, it goes on without saying, so it starts off with lifeline. Uh, it's okay. Not to be okay. All four M three real friends, bridges, teen dreams, galaxy, Umbaye. And so I don't know. Any secret tracks on them? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> you know how them, you know how they, they, they sometimes throw secret tracks on these on these albums, but Co yo. copyright. Man, the current administration allowed the rules of the copyright office to change to where I can no longer copyright an infinite amount of songs. I'm limited to ten. So since mm. I was limited to ten songs, I gave a project with eight because I felt ten would spoil it. I would be forcing trying to find songs to fit like. Mm -hmm. Every song on there, with the exception of Galaxy, was recorded in the same week. The beats were made the same week. They were written and recorded in the same week. Galaxy, I did that like three months ago. Um, Galaxy just fit because mm. I, that was the style of beats I was uh, trying to create. So Who's uh, who's Juice Caesar? He's Juice Juicy. Caesar, man. That's the <laughs> other part of E2E, man. Uh, okay. Shout out Juice Caesar, man. He's a okay. uh, star superior. Uh, that's All my right. cuz, man. He's um, he's co-producer. He He's actually a co-producer. Um for E2E. Um, he'll pick out, it's funny, um, he don't know how to make beats, but he'll be in a grocery store and be like, cuz, I should sound this song, bro, you got to sample it. <laughs> and then he'll be like, no, nah, man, you got to sample the part at two minutes and 58 seconds. And I'm like, okay. And he he has a great ear, so he started, you know, sample this. And then it went from, he started helping me arrange my track list for certain albums. And uh, he'll encourage me, if a song is whack, he'll be like, cuz, you can do better than that, it's whack. Cause that's fire. It it be times where I'm like, I don't really like that song. I'm like, no, nah, cause that's on fire. You got to do it. Put that on there. You got to. So uh, yeah, that's Juice Caesar, man. Shout out Juice Caesar. Nice. Yeah. So I was telling you, um, I was telling you earlier. I had listened to the the album and I, I picked I picked some songs that were my favorites and I grouped them together because they 
they all meant something different to me. So like, uh, like I told you, about, Umbaye was the first, was the first song that I was like, okay, this is, this is, this is my vibe right here. This is something I can just vibe to every single day. And then I listened to Bridges, and I was like, I got this old school feeling when I listened to Bridges, that, you know, that old school vibe you were talking about. Mm-hmm. It just, I, I got that with Bridges, and I just, I. I don't know. It just it 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 pumps me up pretty much. It's like it's like it's 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 a dope thing to ride to, and then all for M three. All so, for me. Oh, so all for me. <laughs> all for me. All for me. So, all for me. I I kind of I kind of like man. That just completes that that vibe. Like if I'm feeling a certain way, these three songs put it together for me. And then, I was I was listening to the other ones, and I said, look. Lifeline, it's okay not to be okay, and uh, Real Friends really hit, really hit hard because of the fact you know I, I told you recently I lost my grandfather, and you, I know you've had loss with your your father, and you've, you know you've battled a lot of different things in your life, uh, to come to this point and to to get here, you know and to creatively organize this and put it out, so you know. Lifeline, I know you told me what, what it meant to you. You were, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a lifeline for, for you. You want to kind of elaborate on that a little bit? Sure. Um, lifeline, Lifeline, I chose to put that as track one because the, the way the guitars come in, uh, you know, and the way it just rolls in, then the beat just drops. Uh, that's the one song where I, like I said, when I was like tipsy and I recorded, you know, I had my vibe, like, I just said what I said, and then I had to sat there and look at my thoughts like you just said that. And it just dealt with everything I was facing. Like, I was just in a dark place, but ultimately I had lifelines, which were good friends. I had, uh, you know, other work that I do on the side, things outside the music that really pulled me in because I felt crushed. I felt there were times that I was just lonely, man, just dealing with loneliness and mm. um, just dealing with, like, you know, like just the absence of family members and just that weight. Um, so Lifeline was me um, really showing appreciation to those people that choose to be my lifeline. Um, like sometimes it's all a matter of perspective. So that's a matter of me. Yeah, Lifeline is just me finding my perspective, uh, just really looking at everything that I was faced with. Uh, sometimes that's really all it is, man. You can freak yourself out and just make something bigger than what it really is. So Lifeline was me appreciating the people that can keep me rooted and keep me grounded while I'm just going through my bullshit. Uh, so I had, I did that song to just express what I'm going through mm. and express how bad it was and my appreciation for the people who stuck around. That's good. Yeah, no, that's, that's, that's wonderful right there. And you know, you were talking about it's okay not to be okay. And I was telling you when we were talking about that, I was like, so many people are asking me, are you okay? Are you okay? And I'm like, no, <laughs> I'm not. And then when I, when I, heard this from you in this song I was like I felt a little bit more comfortable because of the fact that you said it's okay not to be okay which you know it goes against the norm of just you know that people normally know it's like you know. yeah I mean that title the title came from a Korean drama <laughs> title it's okay to not be okay uh, uh for my podcast uh we you know I, I try to watch a plethora of different shows uh so one of my co-hosts, she uh, was like, you, you guys got to watch some K-dramas. So she put me on this uh, K-drama called It's Okay to Not Be Okay. And I love the show. I've really gotten into it. But the theme of the show is mental health. And the, 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 that title, man, like I just couldn't get over that title because that title fit. Um, so when I had did the, the song, it was more or less um, kind of like me trying to do a folk song in a way. Like, you know, just doing a folk song, then I added the drums and the 808s into it, and it was like, nah, man, this is hip-hop, man. Like, <laughs> let me just, yeah. you know, bring all those ideas together, and I've never done a song like that. Like, um, I've been a pretty selfish person when it came to being an artist, man. I pride myself on supplying the vibe, but I know I might say something real, but I never really tried to give anyone no concrete medicine. Mm. Um, so this was my first attempt at really trying to uh, make a song that could save a life. Like I uh, told you off off camera, I really admired when Logic did the 
the song about the uh, suicide hotline. I admired that. Yeah. Um, even with the commercialization of that being his hit, um, it was just one of those things. It meant a lot to people. And I wanted to make a song that can help people because all I hear was Charlemagne the God saying therapy, 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 mental health, mental health, mental health. Hearing that so many times eventually got to me. So uh, the biggest lesson that I got, got out of everything that I've been through is it's okay to not feel okay sometimes. Like that admitting that you're not okay is the first step that healing yourself. If you keep telling yourself, oh, you fine. Like a lot of times in my community, um, people tell you just pray about it. They, they don't really seek out actual help. They just tell you pray about it. Like I got a cousin now, you know, I know some people now who will be like, oh, you know, God, my therapist. And I'm like, bro, God qualifies the call, man. He works through people. So you got to go through people to get your healing. And right. I just want to encourage people to better themselves or just seek help, man, because I don't know where I'd be if I didn't get this help, man. I, I, I want to be a better friend to the friends I have and just a better human on earth because a lot of people just shitty people. Absolutely. So I just want to en encourage people to, no, man, heal yourself. Take care of yourself so you can stop being a shitty person and be the person people deserve. Absolutely. What should the, what should the fans take away from this album and DJs? Everybody else, what should what should be their takeaway from just holding this album as a whole? Man, um, as a whole, I want to be in genres. Um, I just tried different types of styles, different music, musical styles. Like I want to do a, a rock album, pop album. Like, yeah, <laughs> uh, Dead Mouse has a song with Pharrell with Neptune called Pomegranate, and I was like, I want to make a song like that. Calvin Harris has Funk Bounce Waves Volume One that came out in twenty what seventeen or eighteen. Yeah. One of my favorite albums ever, bro. Like it was just funky. It bounces. And it really just influenced me trying to, like, make... I want to broaden my scope as a uh, songwriter. Because right. I don't want to just be, oh, yeah, you're in your 30s. You've been making rap, trying to be... I was like, you know what? Let me focus on being a songwriter and not limit myself to just hip-hop, contemporary hip-hop, or even trap. I want to be able to make any kind of music. So I decided to start practicing. I I've, I've, I know music theory. I've taken piano lessons. I was in band for eight years. It's like, no, nah, dude. I know how to, I know music. So let me mm. apply what I learned. So with this one, Umbaye, um has this nice, uh, you know. Uh, it's got a swing nice, to it. It's got a swing, got a swing to, it. to it. You know, it's that Afro beats, man. I was like, let me do some Afro beats, something a little different. I originally wanted to make a reggae song. Yeah. And um, one of my DJs, shout out Lagrange.5, he was like, man, you need to make an Afro beat song. And I was like, I've never done that. He was like, oh, here's some examples. He gave me some examples. I listened to him, and I was like, let me try it. And the first attempt didn't quite come out as good. <laughs> Second attempt, everything yeah. came out good, though. So You uh, know you know what I would love? I would love to hear, like, a Sean Paul remix to Umbaye. <laughs> I don't know about you, man. but it would just be me. Like, that's what I would like to hear. Man, tell Burner Boy hit me up, man. <laughs> Hop on a remix, man. Like, I want to <laughs> – like, I just – I don't want to be – man, I've been a local artist my entire career. Yeah. And I'm, man, I would give, I would give just about anything to just get out of this, you know, this circle because Player Fly said <laughs> once, he said, uh, people sound crazy. I ain't crazy. I'm just eating it. And I don't get the props that I deserve because I'm local. <laughs> and I felt that, man, because it's like, yo, uh, that shit hurt, man, because it's like when you make dope music and you know your music dope and you know artists can't like, I don't know any artists, any contemporaries that I know that can make the type of music I make. They make the type of music they make. But yeah. I feel like at least a dozen of them making can make them same type of records. They put their own flavor on it, and it's, and it's dope. But I feel like what I do, I feel like there's a kid somewhere who can hear my shit and be like, I want to make a Rico Star type song. Right. And that's just really what I want to do is just have my own sound. So I was like, I'm going to cultivate my own sound. So with this project, I, every song, I want it to be different. Like, just me reaching from different genres, from singing to rapping to an auto-tune. I just want to combine everything and not worry about a concept album. I've done the concept album thing before. That was Peach Parquet. It was all jazz. Uh, this one, it was like, no, nah, man, every beat going to sound different. I'm going to try different things. I'm going to experiment. And Botanical Bounce is what came out. You know what? You know when you just said that? Like, it kind of reminded me of... Um... That song, uh, I think, is a Jay Z song, "Moment of Clarity." 
Mm-hmm. And it, and uh, Dave Chappelle mentioned it one time. He was like, uh, basically said, uh, uh, if skills sold, uh, truth be told, told, I'd probably be lyrically Talib Kweli. Truthfully, I want to rhyme like common sense. But, but so five mil, I ain't been rhyming like common sense. Since, <laughs> I haven't been rhyming like him since. So it's like you take you take all the greats and you just kind of put them together, and you're just thinking, man, there's a reason why they they are they're doing what they're doing. And then Jay Z kind of says says these things. Kanye says these things, and they they elevate people, but then they also, you know, I don't know. I, I don't know how I would feel if I was common and I heard that. But I would be like, I would be like, yeah, he's making, he did five mil. So, you know, that's I mean, why he had to change it up. He had to change it up. He had to. Because, I, I, you know, deep down, like, I used to be this whole hip hop head, like, just die hard, like, no, man, forget all this. It, you know, and then I was like, a part of me is producers. It's like, bro, as a producer, you can't think like that. You're not allowed to think like that. You can't mm-hmm. shit on nobody for their style or what they're doing just because you prefer this type of music. Yeah, because what's gonna happen is you're gonna alienate it, you're gonna ostracize it, you're gonna stop listening, and then one day you're gonna be that old sour person who hating on shit that they don't even listen to. I can't stand when someone hate on someone I'm like, bro. When the last time you listened to it? Like yeah. there was once upon a time where, like, no disrespect when Pluto, when Future dropped Pluto, I wasn't checking for Future. Mm-hmm. I wasn't no fan <laughs> then. Yeah. Last four years later, Mark yeah. Madness came out, and I was like, yo. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. Different sound, you know, that whole monster era. He switched it up and found he found them, he found found himself in a sense, I would say. So just seeing different artists just kind of tweak their sounds and they go to another level. I just feel like, man, there's you can keep growing as an artist. Kendrick gives you something different every album. J. Cole, J. Cole's biggest song was um was a uh, something in my cup. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah, that's his biggest song. You know, it's like out of everything he did, that's the highest that one he done had on Billboard. Right. Like, that was his most successful when he switched it up. And it was just like, yeah, man, people been feeding for J. Cole to get on the trap sign and push it forward. J. Cole essentially does what I I really wanted from Lupe Fiasco yeah. years ago. I kind of wanted him to come down south and yeah. embrace our sound a little yeah, more. Yeah, absolutely. And I was like, man, your lyrics with the production that you got and just some of that Southern flavor, yeah. like everything people made Kendrick out to be. I was like, man, Lupe been that. But production and timing and social media and your fan base and so much things change. But um, these are people I respect. I respect the lyricists, like the people who can just give you dope lyrics. But I don't hate on the artists that dumb it down because ultimately, man, um, the only way you can really change is you you really got to get in the minute you have to get in front of as many people as possible and pat those people you got to make that bank in order to change lives mm. so i don't look at so much as people selling their soul as long as that's the type of music you want to make now an executive throwing you somewhere and making you make a song that you don't want to like and taking all your publishing that's some bullshit. but if you just want to switch it up and be like nah i want to make this type of music there you go but i take uh bob B.O.B. came out the gate with a number one hit with Bruno Mars. Then he did Airplanes. B.O.B. was going out number ones like it went shit. Yeah. They threw him in that pop category. Yeah, they did. And the second he started trying to make street rap records, <laughs> label was, I don't know what happened, but all I know is <laughs> yeah. I didn't hear, you know, I didn't hear those other B.O.B. songs on the radio like I did when he was making the crossover records. That's true. It's like, you know, so I feel like people want to put you in a box. Um, so the best thing you can do is if you make dope music that catches people's ears, you don't allow yourself to be put in the box. Plies, man. Um, bust it, baby. He just became the R&B rap type guy. And then he re- he had to fight so hard. to be like, no, nah, I'm street, dude. Like, I do this. I, I make this type of music. Yeah. And I feel like those times are over with. With social media, I feel like it's harder for people to put you in the box now. So at least there's that, man. People growing out their boxes and just making different type of music. And it's so courageous to see the artists making money from being different. So it just influences me to like just keep pushing it, keep pursuing it. That's cool. So like you're gonna be, um, you know, you, you kind of went over your goals, being an artist and uh, as an individual, kind of like in the in the next like from from day one, you know, to now, like like 
from a year from now and maybe five years from now, where do you see yourself? Like, I, I know you're doing your podcast. You kind of always been like a man of many talents. Like, like, where do you want to be in a year? Where do you want to be in five years? Like Rico Cella. Rico Cella. Yeah. Rico I like, Cella, that. I like the sound of that. I like Rico the sound Cella, of that. Man. Headline yeah. Coachella, man. That's what I want. That's, that's I'm a headline Coachella. Like that's psh, five years. I'm I'm a headline Coachella. I'm saying nah. I'm just put it in the universe and put it in existence. I'm a headline. Within five years, I'm a headline Coachella. I believe you. I believe it's you. Gonna, it's gonna be one of the biggest events that you've seen. Bonnaroo, kill it. South by Southwest, kill it. Like get these festivals, get in front of this audience and really do my thing, man. Um, you know, be in the same conversation as J Cole, Kendrick, Drake. People are like eh, every rapper say that. How can you say that? And I'm like no, nah, man. Um. It's gonna happen. So I just wanna get out of my way and in order to get that to happen, get the audience to find me, get them take uh, notice of the music and really just keep making dope music because, all right, so I have hip hop conversations and I don't like when I have these conversations with people. Like when I talk to you as an Outkast fan and you tell me, I'm like, so what's, what you think Outkast best album? Man, Southern Playlist. I don't wanna talk to you no more. What's Nas' best album, man? Illmatic. I don't, I don't want to talk to you. When you, If you tell me any rapper first album is their best album, one of two things happen. Either you stop caring or they fell off. And ain't no way these artists fell off. Mm -hmm. I'm listening like, uh, no, nah, bro. Artists get better. I want to be one. I feel like Botanical Bounce is better than Peach Park. Uh, it's better than like um, Paying for Champagne. I feel like my music is getting better because I'm honing my craft. I get at the Royster Five Nine. Book of Ryan is whoa, way better than like I can't lie. The stuff he was putting on before Slaughterhouse, like yeah. Royster Five Nine, has grown as a lyricist. Even at his age, he's gotten better. He's one of the few rappers who deserves to be in a breath mentioned when Eminem is mentioned as far as lyrical ability. I'm like, nah, y'all sleeping on Royce. Like, yeah, Eminem is in this. If you got him. One through 10, Royce got to be on that same list because lyrically, he may not have those same impactful big records, but we talking skill, you got to put yeah. him there. So I feel yeah. like artists can get better, man, um, as they get older. They don't have to decline because we always like to look at rappers like, oh, you get off, you start falling. Oh, I like, I bro, I get tired of hearing, I like the old Gucci. I like the <laughs> old Gucci. I'm like, Gucci a clone, I don't like the new Gucci. I was just like... <laughs> Yeah, Bro, like Gucci, Gucci, man, Gucci ain't switched up on y'all. Why y'all, what you talking about? But, I mean, I guess that's just part of preference, man. The internet will yeah. kill you for having a preference. So yeah, they will. <laughs> yeah, they will. So you you mentioned your uh, you mentioned your um, your podcast. You want to plug that a little bit? Tell people where to find it. Man, um, truthfully, I try to keep the music and the pod life separate. But what I will okay. say is this: um, podcast, man, Ninja Please podcast. Uh, deep down inside, man, I'm a geek. Uh, I'm a blurred black nerd, man. I'm into, you know, I'm into Korean dramas. I'm into anime. I'm into, like, you know, comic books, you know, Marvel movies. I yeah. can give you, I can recite you Iron Man's full autobiography from heart because <laughs> I'm just such that much of a geek, man. A, a yeah. podcast was a way of me uh, getting my friends away and just saying, you know what, we have these conversations. We're always predicting what what's going to happen and we was like you know what forget this let's make a podcast we need to be the staples we need to be what the breakfast club is to hip-hop we need to be to the anime world and comic world like you know shout out i like kevin smith but the fact that his name always comes up with stuff i'm like no nah, man we need a black name to come up you know we need people of color we need black names to come up when you start mentioning these geek forms because Black Panther, once upon a time, was the biggest Marvel movie of all time, domestically. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so I'm like, no, man, when when black people contribute so much to the culture, I'm like, no, man, we 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 run this culture. So let's let's get behind it and let's start, let's start talking. Let's make this professional thing. Let's be the voice of of the nerds. And shout out to all the other nerd podcast, blurred podcasters out there. So there we just go. wanted to take that to the next level because we feel like our voice and our insight is so profound and special. We can do better with other blurs just can't do. Our voice is just that unique. So I feel like we're in a league of our own. Why don't we just show it off to the world? That's, that's true. Absolutely. So 
man, I just want to, I just want to thank you for uh, taking the time out today and, you know, letting me interview you and letting the fans get a more in-depth view of Sean Miller, Rico Starr, you know, taking, you know, taking everything that, you know, even myself can benefit from and what the fans can benefit from hearing the music that drives us every single day. And uh, just, you know, everybody go out and, uh, you know, every single platform, man, check out Botanical, Botanical Bounce. Bounce. Ride All to it. One. Ride to it. Your Spotify will put it on your track if you like it. It will, it will yes. make it part of your daily drive, man. I've already got it on my daily drive. Like I just went and clicked today and it was like in the list. It was already there. I saw Britches right there. I was like, hey, that's what I'm talking about. I'm trying, man. <laughs> just like fans, man. You guys check out Botanical Bounce. Uh, but check out all of them. Check out California. Check out, check out Val- Stars and Stripes. California is damn near classic, though. I can't check even lie. Pain for Champagne. Yeah, yeah, man. It's um And uh, the man with the Iron Mask is coming out soon. Okay, okay. Uh, another project uh, completed. I just completed it on uh, yesterday. Uh, I like called the, the man with the iron mask. Oh, sneak um, peek. Yeah, man, go. sneak peek. Man with the iron mask, man. It's uh, instead of the man in the iron mask, I'm the man with the iron mask on some great power, great responsibility. Like I look at it from the sense of my father. If my father was Tony Stark, and he died, which he did because of the snap, he gave me the mask. He didn't have the daughter. He had me. He gave me the mask. And now I'm the man with the Iron Mask. Now I'm the new Iron Man. Shout out Ghostface Killer. You know, yeah, shout out yeah. Ghostface. That's Iron Man right there. Hey. But it's just like, no, I'm the new Iron Man. You know, if right. Ghostface give me his blessing, I, I, I'll rightfully take that moniker. Yeah, but man. until then, you know, I'm me, Rico Starr. But Botanical Bounce coming to on uh, soon, E2E4. We should have that out in the third quarter of the year. And um, yeah, man. Botanical's out now. Botanical's out now. Botanical's they, out now, though. Botanical now. Bounce. Go get okay. it now, man. Okay. I'm not going to stop cranking out right. this music man it's just gonna keep coming man that's what's up man i appreciate you and i, I want to appreciate all the fans people who are going to be watching this listen we you know this is zoom this is covid zoom right now we're going to be doing these just so you know but uh keep your ears to the streets man this thank is my you first for zoom by the way oh man that's cool that's cool and you let me do it thank you yeah man thank you thank for you. having me man absolutely. thank you for the idea absolutely. thank you for hitting me up thank you for allowing me to plug in thank you absolutely. for the support man Absolutely. Like, real, real real talk, man. Thank you, bro. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. So everybody keep your ears to the streets. This is DJ Arrow Avi, aka your tech set guru. All right, guys. Go check this stuff out. Everybody, yo, support my man. Support support Rico Star. Support him every day. Man, get him out there. Get get, you know, he's gonna be everywhere soon. So y'all better like get a signature get on early, autograph. Man. It's gonna That's be soon. Bounce. He's about to, about to get these checks. <laughs> so I'll hey, talk about it. Yeah. Hey, I'm All right. Forward to it, man. Thank Appreciate you so it. Much. And thank you so much. Signing off, DJ Arrow Avi. Peace. All right, Rico Stark. Thank you for having me, man. Peace out. Peace. Thank you.